Next case, Tesla. <laughs> Their CEO, Elon Musk. Now, he's making headlines for that strange-sounding earnings call the other day. I want to bring in Loop Ventures managing partner Gene Munster, who is a Tesla guy, a true believer that Tesla is the... Mm. Whatever. But you're a true believer, OK? <laughs> Got it. But do you think that after all of this, that rather strange call, is he the right guy to be leading an auto company at this point? I think he is. And I want to just quick put uh, the magnitude of how strange that was in a perspective, Stuart, is I've been on just over 1,900 earnings calls, and this <laughs> one stands alone in terms of how combative it was. And it does beg that question about his uh, temperament. And I think at the end of the day is this, is that there are, it reminds me very much uh, like Steve Jobs was. And uh, I think that these uh, crazy visionaries uh, need this. I, I think there should be better rails around it, but to, the simple takeaway is this is one of the costs of, of having a leader that is a, a visionary is they get uh, easily irritated. Look, they're burning through cash. We heard that they were burning through $6,500 a minute or some extraordinary amount. He's going to have to borrow more money in the fairly immediate future, probably around $2 billion. Who's going to lend him money with a backdrop like that earnings call and the, the difficulties of producing the Model 3? I think a lot of people will lend them money. And the reason is that this company is just uniquely positioned. We've talked about this in the past, is the mission statement's just not about uh, uh, create car. It's about renewable energy and accelerating the globe's adoption of that. And so it's about capturing, storing, and using that energy. I just want to put a quick uh, story around this, is that as soon as the Model 3 gets out into the masses, I think you're going to see that the, the, the public uh, view of this, investors' view of this story is going to turn more positive. So to answer your question, who's going to give them money? Once there's more Model 3s out, I think that that's really going to turn the light on that this is a, a pivotal moment in automotive and people are going to want to get behind that story. Okay, Gene Monster is still a true believer. I'm going to move on to another, and that would be Apple. I think you're a true believer there. And we had the news that Warren Buffett just bet big on Apple. He bought 75 million shares in the first, um, first quarter of this year. I think, if I'm not mistaken, Gene, you are forecasting a 7% rise in Apple stock, what is it, this year or next year? So what we're thinking about is the, just the pure impact of the buyback alone. This has nothing to do with new products or uh, uh, increasing the multiple around excitement about the next phone, for example. This is just what the company potentially could do by taking that massive amount of cash that they generate and slowly buying the stock back. They can basically buy back somewhere between 50 and $60 billion a year, which would be that 7%. I think that the story on Apple is going to change over the next year, and Warren Buffett's a perfect example of that. This is going to go away from investors sweating an iPhone quarter because the iPhone's more stable now. It's not growing, but it's more stable. And separately and more importantly is this focus on cash, the, amount, the massive amount of cash, very different than the other FANG stocks, the amount of cash that they generate. And I think that they're going to be rewarded in the market for buying their stock back. And by the way, Apple looks like it's on track to, for a record high close today if it keeps on as it is. Gene, you're having a good day. Tester's OK, Apple's OK, and you're on this program. Well, we like that. Thank you very much indeed, Gene. <laughs> Thank you, Stuart.